About two years earlier. All done. I finished changing and smiled at myself in the mirror. Then I took a deep breath and exclaimed, Rank 1 Police Officer Cyrus Testella, reporting for duty. Yes, that sounds good. Is my tie a level crooked? I stared at the mirror and scrutinized my uniform. On one hand, I was very proud of myself, but I also felt shy, like someone worrying their best clothes weren't enough on a Sunday. I have to get used to these clothes. For myself. And, more importantly, for the people. I clasped the scabbard onto my belt and heard a knock on the door. Cyrus, are you awake? Today is your first day. Yes, I'm awake. I will be there in a moment. I just need my sword. I smiled, amused by my mother's petty worries, and finished getting dressed. I don't think I forgot anything. Time to go. I do wonder, is this the day that she first met Finn? Maybe? Because it, it seems since they were in different stages of society that they may not have known each other before they started working together. I ate breakfast and left the house a little early. I can't be late on my first day. When I was about to leave the house, my mother approached me. Look at your hair, it's so messy. She combed my hair with her fingers. Oh, I'm sorry. You're a girl before you're a police officer. You have to take care of yourself. Yes, but I disagree. I'm a police officer before I'm a girl. My mother smiled wryly and patted me on the head. All the more reason to care about appearances. You mirror the peace of society. That is very true. I will try to be a model for others. Are you wearing the pendant? Yes. Don't worry, I swapped the chain for a sturdy one so that I won't lose it. I took out the pendant to show her. It looks so nice. We're middle class, but I still can't believe that a lady like my daughter is going to be a police officer. Mother. I'm proud of you for choosing something where you can help others, though. Sometimes this job will be harsh or sad, probably more so than I can imagine. But this is the path you chose. Walk it proudly, all right? I will. I'll stay true to my belief in justice. <laughs> I'm sorry for keeping you. Are you going now? Yes, we'll see each other this evening. Yes. My lovely girl, you can do this. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Oh, I sat up and looked around the room. I was dreaming. I'd been pulled away from my old home, back down into the sanctuary district. I was once again in Adage's house. I'm glad I got to see my mother again, even if I was dreaming. The last time I had seen my mother, her expression had been blank, her body bloodstained. She had looked like a doll. The memory had already become a little hazy. <sighs> My pendant. I touched my chest. It wasn't there. Of course it wasn't. I had given it away. Back then I had felt like I didn't need to keep it, but... I had been protective of it ever since my mother had given it to me when I was a little girl. I couldn't accept having lost it now. It didn't feel right. My mother, my father, the pendant, Ryleth, Merlo... I've lost so much. I became a police officer to protect the people, to protect the peace, but I was unable to protect the things around me. It really hurts. Hmm? Oh, you're awake. There's dinner. He left again, turning up the threshold. I couldn't protect anything, but still I live, wandering through life. No, I was kept alive. First, Ryleth had kept me alive, and now Adage. I claimed I would be independent, but I lived like a parasite. 
I need to live up to what I want to do. I have to be independent. I had found a job as a Daji's assistant. I had the chance to start over. I'm a doctor's assistant now. It isn't the same as being a police officer, but I'm helping others nonetheless. I left the room behind me, carrying my mother's words of encouragement in my heart. We'll do our best. The clattering of cutlery was the only sound we made as we ate. He's a silent one. I looked at him as I had my meal. He seemed to be simply eating and not thinking about anything. I was brought up to think that bouncing around during dinner is unseemly, but... Dinners were still a social event for me. Nothing like this taciturn atmosphere. It was a little awkward for me. I mean, do consider the fact that he's probably been eating alone for a while, so... Um, I should bring something up? So we eat in this room? Yes. This is the medical room, right? Yes. Are you really not going to make any effort to keep the conversation alive? Then again, he had never seemed like the talkative sort. It's getting more and more uncomfortable. Did you make this yourself, Adage? Do you see anybody else who could have made it? Hmm? I was lost for words, having expected a simple yes or no. You don't, right? Of course I did. Ah, I see. Adage cooked this himself. The soup was bland, with nothing but a sorry little bit of parsley floating in it. I mean, it's no pasta, I guess. Something that seemed to be grilled meat had a reasonable consistency, but I couldn't tell what style of cooking it was supposed to be. <laughs> I can't describe it. <laughs> um... I mean... <laughs> I feel like this is rude. <laughs> um, I feel like this is a lie. <laughs> is she just thinking this or is she gonna be like, man, this is the worst thing I've ever eaten. <laughs> I mean, I was told honest and practical. I feel like if I did this, he'd say, no, it's garbage. It just has, like, the needed nutrients to get through. I, I don't claim to be a good cook. Uh... Hey! Oh good, I'm glad I felt the need to share that little tidbit with him. Huzzah! Adage, your cooking is a little bad. No. It's not a little bad. Adage stopped eating and stared at me. It's very bad. Yeah, I figured you were one of those guys that's like, Nah, don't don't try to BS me. I, I know I'm trash at cooking. Uh, and it's not getting better. Uh, Disgusting. <laughs> I smiled at the relentless criticism in his words. Is this food funny to you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought it funny that you know how bad it is. I made it myself. Of course I know whether it's good or bad. Um, if you know that what you made is bad, why aren't you trying to improve? I looked at Adage, half expecting him to say that he had already improved by leaps and bounds. Food is, to me, sustenance. If the nutritional value is adequate, the taste is irrelevant. Called it. I see. I suppose that is one way to see it. I knew firsthand how difficult it was to get food in the Sanctuary District. We aren't in a position to care much about the taste, are we? Leave it if you can't eat it. But I don't want you to die. Try to eat a little. 
Oh, I will eat all of it. I wouldn't want to waste it. I see. I didn't think it was good, but it wasn't bad enough to reject entirely. Okay. I need to eat it if I want to remain strong. Good on you, girl. Good on you. Hmm. Thank you for the food. I hadn't been able to eat as much as I wanted for a while. I felt deeply satisfied. If I had laid down, I would have slept again. I can't do that. I'm not a guest here. Adage, please give me a task. A task? Yes, let me help with the household. Is there anything I can do? Well, you could wash the dishes. No, I'll do it. What? Why? Because I like it, of course. Washing the dishes? Yes. I wasn't saying I like you. Ow! What? I, I wasn't trying to imply, but... You like washing the dishes. That's just so rare. Is it? I like cleaning of any kind. Turning something dirty into something clean is enjoyable. I knew you were going to be a Levi. So don't do the cleaning, okay? I won't let you steal my fun. R right Are you sure? Cleaning seems precisely what one would normally hire assistance for. It seems so, but isn't. I see. Anyway, currently I have no pressing requests of you. You will start working tomorrow. You have the day to yourself. I understand. May I go outside? Outside? Yes. Not for long. May I? He thought about it for a moment and nodded. Don't go too far from the house. I won't. See you later. She's so motivated. Ah, I think you like her a little bit. You may say you don't like her, but you like her a little bit. Hmm. I closed the door and walked a few steps. It was very quiet. There's actually crickets here. I could hear the wind rustling the grass and the buzzing of insects. If I closed my eyes now, I'd feel like I was in the heights. There was a pasture a short distance away from the Testella mansion. Standing beside the house reminded me a little of that. But I'm in the depths now. I can see the vast tower supporting the heights even in this new location, like a spear piercing the sky. I certainly didn't expect to see a place like this in the Sanctuary District. Of course. This place is a lot bigger than the heights. Adage, what about washing the dishes? I'm done. It was fun. I... I see. He stood beside me, smiling, and looked up at the sky. He looks to be in good spirits. He must like washing the dishes. There is a lodge you've never seen before, especially beyond the walls. You've barely arrived. There's a lot to learn about the vast differences between here and the Heights. So much that you'll hate it. That sounds grim, but I'm still looking forward to it a little. You are? Yes. Having been exiled was a harsh punishment for me. But lamenting that isn't going to change it. I need to find things I enjoy instead of being negative about it. That might be difficult given my personality. I need to accept things I can't change. Yes. Struggles don't change your fate. Reality is immutable. You will have to accept... The housework. Uh... Housework. Except for the cleaning. Don't interfere with what I enjoy. Uh, r right I see. That's a strange response. I wanted something a little crisper. We were talking about the world and our place in it, and then you talked about domestic chores. It was a strange leap. Not at all. At least not to me. 
Domestic chores are essential to life. They are the very foundation of what makes us human. And I'm leaving these fundamentally human tasks to you. Why, I'm effectively entrusting you with my human life. It's a serious responsibility. I is it? Yes. My future is at stake. Don't slack in your duties. I won't. I wasn't going to, but he certainly put an odd spin on things. Adage took a deep breath and looked at the sky. I liked looking at the stars when I was still on the heights. The stars? Yes, but usually they're not visible from here. Oh! Like, well, this boy is very generous with his CGs. I like that. I stood beside him and looked up, too. It's always cloudy. Yes, always. In the morning, around noon, at night. There is hardly a cloudless day. I've left the heights behind, but I miss seeing the stars. Adage. <laughs> I think we're not close enough for this conversation yet. Can you see them sometimes? He says that it's mostly cloudy, so can you see them sometimes? Can you see the stars sometimes? Yeah. After a long rain, you can sometimes see them. But people have other concerns when that happens. The ground is soft in the sanctuary district, so rain is a catastrophe. My workload and yours will skyrocket during the rain. Be prepared for that. I'll keep it in mind. Oh, we had a nice talk about the stars. Adage is a strange man. He didn't speak much, but he wasn't entirely taciturn either. It was hard for me to tell what he was thinking because he was so expressionless, but a lot seemed to be happening below the surface. Maybe I'll understand him one day. I wanted to be on good terms with him since I was going to do his domestic chores. I mean, be his assistant. But it isn't going to be very easy. What's so good about looking at me? Ha <laughs> ha! Everything, my good sir. Wink. Um. If you want to look at me, do it in a way I don't notice. Your glare is too piercing. In a way you don't notice, huh? Yes. Like stealing a glance or stalking me. Okay, I... Usually you don't give people permission for that, but okay. You don't want to tell me not to look at all, huh? I can't supervise your every movement. As long as you don't unsettle me, I don't care. I'm feeling cold. I'm going back inside. Oh, I'll come back too. Don't unsettle me. Atashe really was a strange man. You may gaze upon my beauteous visage. However, do not... <laughs> what, what was it? Do not startle me? Unsettle. I, I couldn't think of the word. Do not unsettle me. Good night. I said good night. Adage decided to read in the medical room, so I went to bed. Okay, I was... I'm like, oh no, are we going to get to the part where it's like, I always sleep naked. Don't look at me in a way I notice, and I won't be bothered, and you don't be bothered by it, okay? This is just natural. <laughs> it's kind of the way I was expecting this to go, but it's like, alright, he's reading right now. Not yet. It's not very late in the evening. I'm not sleepy yet, really. My worries, whether I would be able to sleep or not, were erased as soon as I lay down on the sofa. I yawned and began to drift off. I'm not sleepy. Oh, I think I will sleep well. I drew the sheets all the way over my head. Good night, Adage. Hey! Our first
first time from his perspective. Hazur. All right, boy, what you thinking? What you thinking in that brain? What do you think of our girl? Um, clothes. I made a big find on the street, didn't I? Cyrus. Nobility from the Heights. Or, since she was in the Sanctuary District now, former nobility. I should have left while I still could. But I couldn't. I hadn't told Cyrus, but it hadn't been completely true that saving them was impossible. What the heck, Hadaje? What do you mean? I had bandages to stop the bleeding. Perhaps I could have saved one of them. But only one of them. I could have saved the mother and let her child die. Or I could have saved the child and let the mother die. <sighs> that is a difficult choice. I wavered, choosing neither. And both died. I let someone die whom I could have saved. The guilt froze me in place, and as I lingered, Cyrus appeared. I brought her here to clear my conscience. Hmm. Interesting. And I couldn't make a choice, probably because I'm recessive. Saying it out loud made my feelings even heavier. The lighter the load, the better. I don't have enough to support someone else. But here she is, hired to absolve me of my guilt. This is my fault. I can't let her suffer because of me. I wonder how things will turn out now for me, and for her. Well, it depends how long you keep that little tidbit to yourself, I guess. One of these days you're gonna have to come clean about it. Mm -hmm. I smelled something sweet. Footsteps. Someone's coming. <laughs> Hello? The mysterious sound gave me a huge start. Wh what's happening? Oh. Adage stood before me, carrying a frying pan in his left hand and a spatula in his right. Adage. It's morning. Yes. Food. Uh, all right. Come. Um. He turned around to leave. I stopped him. Yes. C could you wake me up more gently, please? No. Your employment benefits don't mention me being gentle. Yes, but... Being woken up by someone banging on a frying pan is a little traumatic. Then you'll have to rouse yourself unaided. I'll try to. That was a reasonable solution. Like, okay. Don't want to be traumatized by a frying pan? Wake up myself. You got it. I folded up the sheets. He could have shaken me or chosen any other method apart from hitting a frying pan. Oh, I see. You want me to cook. What? That must be why you brought a frying pan. I'm your domestic helper. I mean, your assistant. It makes sense that I cook. Adage thought about it. Then he nodded. Can you cook? Well, now that I think about it... No. Our servants had always cooked. I had never learned to. I'll work hard and learn how. I asked if you can cook. Yes or no? This exchange. Feeling a strong sense of deja vu, I admitted that... No, I couldn't. Why are you trying to do something you can't do? Because... I have to. Since you like cleaning, I can't do that. Shouldn't I at least cook? We'll return to the issue of cooking later. Later? Yes. I don't want to waste ingredients on your learning process. You can learn slowly about how it's done. I made breakfast. Come and eat already. He turned and headed for the door. He already made breakfast, huh? 
I'm not cleaning and I'm not cooking. Why am I here? To absolve him of his guilt. I thought about it as I dressed myself. Tomorrow I'll wake up of my own accord. I didn't want to wake up to the sound of a frying pan being banged again. Yeah, I can kind of understand that. Breakfast was laid out on the table in the medical room. Fresh vegetables, soup, and... Something that looks like scrambled eggs. And something that looks like toast. It was difficult to tell whether it was something else entirely. I stared at the yellow and brown shapes as I sat down. Thank you for the food. I took a timid bite of the yellow mass. Oh, good. It's egg. I was relieved that my guess was correct, but the relief didn't last. The taste was too strange. This tastes odd. I know. I stared at Adage. I have no intention of learning how to cook better. It suffices for sustenance. That made sense, in a way, and I was tempted to agree, but... Perhaps I should make the food from now on. Can you really make something better? His eyes lit up. He sounded agitated. W why is he getting worked up? Maybe he cares about the quality more than he shows. Didn't he say that all he needed was food that suffices for sustenance? Wasn't that enough? I felt guilty for giving him false hope and shook my head. I've only cooked a little in school during classes. I'm sorry. So less than I have. But I said I would be your assistant and help with domestic chores. I'll do my best to improve. To cook. Yes. I'll do my best to improve beyond your level of cooking. Beyond my level. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult your cooking, she says, having already told him it tasted terrible twice. No. My cooking is horrible. Surpassing me shouldn't be hard. If you're serious about this, try to reach a point where we can serve it to visitors. Uh, okay. I will. I'll keep doing it in the meantime. Eat it, even if it's bad. Yes, I will. My cooking is horrible. That was a cold and correct assessment of his own skill. I've never met anyone who judged himself as neutrally as that. Adage was truly a strange man. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times so far. Strange man. There, all done. Adage, sitting and reading, sighed without looking up. Oh, <sighs> you stole my pleasure. Don't say that. I have to do something. I'd negotiated with Adage after breakfast. It had resulted in me being allowed to wash the dishes. I told you that I like cleaning. I wiped the table while Adage grumbled. What should I do now? He flipped a page and muttered something. Pluck weeds in the garden. Pluck weeds. You don't know what weeds are, huh? They're the green things coming out of the ground over there. I, I know that! Oh. Good. I suppose even the nobility knows what weeds are. How does he think we lived? The Heights were a highly stratified society, but the discrimination wasn't that harsh. Still, I'd often been thought of as out of touch. Nobody ever thought I was as out of touch as that, however. In the Heights, plucking the weeds was done by the gardener or one of the servants. Plucking the weeds. I understood the order, more or less, but I hesitated. You're my assistant. You do whatever I tell you to do. Weeds are the enemy of the vegetable garden. They grow everywhere and steal nutrients from the earth. Similar to you, in fact. To me? Yes. They're parasites, much like you now that you're here. R really now? Adage started to postulate in a way that quickly escaped the realm of logic, in my opinion. I know that nobody likes to slay their kin, but I'm ordering you. Do this for your own survival. Don't compare 
me to a parasitic weed? Man. R right I will. I hope I'm not pulling out any herbs with the weeds. Finally, I have a task. Time to get to work. I did worry about that. I'm like, how do I know if it's a weed or a herb, though? I ripped out the weeds one after another. If I could pull them free root and all, I did. Otherwise, I used a small shovel. There! Got it out. I had been fighting with a particularly resilient root, but eventually triumphed. I was proud of myself. The sweat was glistening on my skin. Hmm? Oh, a flower. There was a single flower buried among the disorderly weed growth. It's small, but so pretty. I wanted to leave the flower there, but it had to go. I'm sorry, I'll have to take you out. I couldn't bring myself to wrench it loose, though, and instead dug it out with earth around it. Its roots were thin and short, easy to dig free. A flower. I remembered being given a flower for helping that man. I could have given a flower to Ryleth while she was still alive if I'd wanted. But it was too late. I'll take a flower with me to the Sanctuary District next time I go there. Her corpse was most likely gone already, but I wanted to leave a flower. Make it two. Adage said that it was too late for regret, but even if he was right, I still found myself lamenting my past choices and imagining a different outcome. The past can't be changed. Only the present is still salvageable for the benefit of the future. He'd brought me with him because of a sense of guilt, he'd said. That was his way forward. I had to find a way forward too, just like he had, to be independent. I could be useful if I had a sword. A doctor probably doesn't need a sword fighter, but if he does one day, I'll be there. <laughs> I heard a sound behind me and froze. Wh what was that? Hesitantly, I turned around. There was nobody there. No, I heard something. I'm sure of it. I was certain there'd been someone. I could see them moving in the undergrowth. C come out, you coward! Stop hiding! I raised my little shovel in self-defense. They're not responding. I know you're there! Come out! They charged forward. Oh, boy. Save me, please? Yeah! What's happening? Doctor, help! What is it? I was sitting on my behind on the ground. Adage came running. Uh, um... Tell me what happened. Stop mumbling. Th there! There? With trembling fingers, I pointed at the undergrowth. A lizard. That's just a lizard. Aw. Friendly lizard? Adage stood up and approached the lizard without hesitation. He picked it up by the tail and showed it to me. <laughs> you don't like lizards. I I don't know. I've never seen them up close. This is a good chance, then. Look at it. Ah! D don't come closer! But then you can't look at it. What's so scary about a lizard? Adage stared at the lizard, perplexed. It won't bite or growl. They're timid creatures, really. It, it creeps me out. Take it elsewhere, quick! No point in that. There are plenty of them around here. P plenty Yes. They eat insects for us. It's a form of symbiosis. And we can eat them, too. They're a lot more useful than you are, that's for sure. Oi! Adage patted the little lizard. Never wanted to be a little lizard more than I do now. W worse than a lizard? I was torn between self-pity and anger. Alas, the lizard scared me so much I could only groan. I can't let him go now, can I? 
You're going to eat him? No, he is not destined for dinner. I need him for medicine. Medicine? Yeah. Parts of them can be used in cough medicine. I can't use you in cough medicine either, can I? What can I say to that? Please don't. Lunch will be served soon. I'll call you when it's done. Have fun pulling out weeds until then. So there are a lot of lizards around here. I looked around feeling paranoid. I need to focus on the weeds and stop thinking about lizards. I waited to be summoned to lunch, feeling all the while that something was lurking behind me. 